Hello everyone, hope you all are doing very well. So you have heard about large language models, Chat GPT, Midjourney, Stability AI, Google Image, Open AI Dali, Bloom, Dali 2, Dali Mini. There are lots and lots of large language models available open source paid through API and many other ways being used by technical and non-technical people worldwide. And the numbers are in hundreds of millions. So you, as being an engineer, is trying to understand how these large language model works and the best answer we can ask to large language model itself, such as chat GPT, to help us understand how everything works together. So hello. Once again, for those who are new to my channel, my name is Avkash and in this video, I'm going to help you understand how large language model works by taking the deep dive approach of prompt engineering. Combining the prompt engineering and the chat GPT interface, we will not only explore how prompt engineering works, how to write better prompts and at the same time, we will also learn how large language model works. So here we are at the chat GPT prompt and our very first question going to be is what is chat GPT? So we already have this information in public domain is a chat GPT is a large language model which is developed by OpenAI and mainly designed for answering question providing information based on its understanding about the world until 2021 and one thing important came out from it that it is actually a based on gpt architecture next question will be similar to that so the next question is explain what is generative pre-trained transformer and if this is broken we can reload the page come back to previous session you can check at this point the previous session is it still available or not so you can say could you please rephrase the previous answer and it should give you the information exactly the same which tells you that you are connected back to the previous chat gpt session now we can ask our next question that what are the gpt models or the generative pre-trained transformer models so few things came from it that we already know that generative pre-trained transformer is three different words first is generative it can generate text it can also generate the images uh, that's a little different context but they are still part of large language models and then pre-trained it's already trained earlier and it's using the transformer architecture and that's where the next question comes that what is the transformer architecture so we know that transformer architecture is proposed in 2017 by google team was money and all and that's where the idea of self attention mechanism was proposed where model where model has capability to weight the various part of the given sentence the given sentence means the words in a given sentence and based on its understanding of each word weight in the overall sentence, it can generate the answer. It means it can do q and a, it can summarize the text, it can answer the question based on the uh, question asked and the answer it has in its vocabulary or in, in its pre-trained model. So we got some information about transformer and here is the transformer model image which has the encoder and the decoder and we can go a little more deeper to learn about how this transformer work let's come back to chat gpt so now rather than taking the basic understanding of transformer we are looking the answer based on chat gpt so with regard to chat gpt the transform for transformer helps to understand the various parts of the word given sentence or the sentences and 
generate the given the attention for the each word with regard to the given sentence and sentences and finally formulate the best possible answer that's the transformer going back to little up we can look into that the transformer architecture is helpful to generate the text which is close to human language it means the transformer also enables chat gpt to learn about the language and the all supported languages available in chat gpt while making prediction chat gpt learn each word it's given attention with regard to or with, within the context of that sentence and finally when it's generating the prediction it actually gives the weight for the each of the word based on attention is given for all those words within that sentence context and that's how the output is generated that's why if you can see that this question how does transformer architecture work regard to chat gpt is a very different answer to a, a comparative to the what is transformer architecture now we can look into that transformer architecture has decoder and encoder but we are trying to go a little more deeper to really get a lot more technical answer on that regard so the we need to phrase question a little differently so this is the question we can rephrase it explain explain transformer architecture in details when using it for training and inference in chat gpt so now we are going to go a little more deeper and trying to understand the for the training how the transformer architecture work and for the inference how it work because this is the I was saying, this is the transformer architecture which is used for training and inference so here we have the detailed information with regard to training architecture and the inference architecture so for the chat gpt training definitely we need to provide the training data and as well as the training we need to provide the test data reason why i'm saying is that because the chat gpt is actually using the supervised learning when the training is completed the context of supervised learning has not been used here yet but based on my knowledge what i'm saying but we can go a little more deeper to get that answer as well but basically the idea is that in the in the training part the self attention mechanism feed forward layer residual connections they all work together to give the attention to the most important part of the given sentence or the given sentences and based on the attention is giving when the answer is generated it actually evaluates the answer correctness based on the weight of attention given to each word or the each token or the attention is giving to the each words in the given sentence or sentences when we are using the chat gpt for the inference first the question is understood based on the different words available in the given question and the weight is given and then when the set words are generated and for with regard to the answer for the given question the weights are checked to make sure that the attention is available in those sentences according to the input weights and that's how the sentences are generated and at the very last those sentences are rechecked to make sure that they are human understandable means whatever language which you are using that language model is applied so the output is in that particular language for validity and understanding as of now we have asked lots of question we can actually summarize the keywords so we could say so the question this time i'm asking the generate a list of all top keywords available in the answers to all my previous questions so so far i have asked so many questions i just want to get a list of top keywords because i could use those keywords and go a little more deeper and here is a list of top keywords available in the answers we have received from the chat gpt so far if you would want to summarize your all answers we can also ask from chat gpt 
So I have asked ChatGPT to summarize all my answers in few bullet points and the order of complexity and the technological depth. And it is little hard question to the chat GPT because it's going to look into all the questions it has been answered so far, summarize them, order them in terms of complexity because that will help me to understand how I can go further while I'm trying to understand this context. And I just want to show you that when this answer is being generated, first of all, you will see that the next word is being predicted in the sentence and it's evaluate what the next word will be. And because our question is to generate bullet points and order of complexity, so that part has already been understood by the machine learning model to how to answer the question. Now, the sentences are being created by predicting the next word available in this sentence. And I would like to tell you to generate this answer, it took most time until now for the chat GPT to compose this answer because the complexity in the question was really very high. And this answer is really very helpful for us to understand that chat GPT is a GPT language model. It uses the transformer. Transformer architecture is totally based on self-attention mechanism, feed forward layers and residual connections. During it, the training phase, we need to learn how it works, inference, how self-attention mechanism is used and transformer architecture is important for chat GPT to generate the human understandable sentences. Very good summary. It means focus is a lot more on transformer architecture as well as on the self-attention mechanism. So now we can go ahead and we can dig a little more deeper to understand the self-attention mechanism. That's where the complexity comes. So the question is describe how self-attention mechanism is applied to chat GPT. In very first step of self-attention mechanism, the model computes the attention given to the each word or the each token available in the input sentence and based on that attention is code, the model de determines the importance of each element and indicate that model that whenever it's going to generate the prediction, it has to give in the attention to those words based on the attention score. And attention score, they are computed based on a set of queries, key and values associated with the each element in the input sentence. Okay, these queries and keys are compared to determine the attention score. And when they, they are used to compute the weighted sum of the values in each element for the input sentence. We can go back and look into this and that's where we can see that the detailed architecture when we are talking about the encoder and decoder as you could see here that here is the value key and query and just going a little more deeper but we haven't asked chat gpt to go a little more deeper to ask but at least you are getting an idea that we are going into step by step towards the guts of chat gpt so if we want to go a little more deeper to understand the how does input data is transformed, we can ask and thus can give us a little more in depth detail about the, the input data processing with regard to self-attention mechanism. So our next question is how does input data is transformed into input sentences in chat GPT? And now we are getting a little more deeper about the terminology or the deep learning or the natural language processing terminology with regard to how everything is happening. This answer could be a little more general, bird's eye view, but here we are a little more deeper because now we are understanding the tokenization, encoding, padding, and then input sentence preparation. So encoded and the padded input sentence is passed through the linear layer which maps the representation to a higher dimensional space and before being fed into the transformer architecture. It means whenever data is being fed into here, the input embeddings has already been created. So this step, the tokenizations and coding padding has already been created to generate the input sentence and then input sentence, which is basically the vector is being fed into the transformer. 
And as you could see here that if you would want to know that how this uh, em embeddings are created, you can actually ask this question as well. If you are focusing on this, how does text embeddings are generated from the input text in ChatGPT? So we have lost connection to this session. We will reload it. ChatGPT is asking for my money. We are still here. We can ask for the question again. So the embedding which we talks about here during the encoding phase has little more details to it. If you are looking into the one hot encoding, you can replace this. So we are asking that how does the one hot encoding because the answer is that such as the when we are taking the tokens from the sentences and converting them to the encoded numerical representations we are using either or the chat gpt is using either one hot encoding or the embedding so here is the text embedding and here is the one hot encoding and it also answer also shows that whenever we are using the one hot encoding the matrix really became very very sparse and that could became really computationally intensive for it to process. So rather than one hot encoding, the, the text embeddings or the word embeddings, so that part is really used because that part actually generates the dense vector. And now we can ask here, the what is the dense vector representation of the input data in chat GPT? So the answer is really very summarized and it's very uh, to the point in this last paragraph. So the dense vector representation for the input data in chat GPT is a compact and dense numerical representation. It's not in the terms of zero and one. It has the numerical order of the real number. For the input text, it captures the relationship and the meaning between the words and the phrase of the input text. And that is what is used in the transformer architecture to generate the final output. So if you are still not sure that what is the dense vector because we just got the answer, the dense vector representation for the input data in chat GPT. So the question can be that what is dense vector in text embeddings? We lost again session and here you can get answer with regard to dense vectors in general to generate the text embeddings. So we are still working on the input processing, how the input is ready created for the chat GPT to consume. We haven't even got the inside the encoder and decoder part of chat GPT yet. So now we can ask the question that how does the encoder and decoder work in chat GPT? And when we are asking, our question is the encoder and the decoder of chat GPT. So there is the encoder and here is the decoder in the summary. So the encoder is responsible to take the input text and generate into a context of a representation. And the context of a representation is fed into the decoder and that's where you are getting the output which is generated using a series of self attention layer and the fully connected layers. We can look into here so you will see that the self attention and fully connected layers are used. And if you would want to understand that how this multi head as self attention is really used. So next question is how does self attention works in the encoder part of the transformer in chat GPT. And so that was the self attention. Now we can actually ask for multi head self attention. So I have added multi head. So whatever was given in this self attention, so multi head self attention is an extension of the self attention mechanism in chat GPT. So the self attention mechanism in the transformer architecture is allows to model to capture the relationship and the meaning between the words and phrases in the given text. And in order to make it work for lots and lots of data, that's why the multi-head self-attention because what it does, it actually parallelizes the self-attention mechanism by splitting the self-attention mechanism into the multiple parallel attention mechanism. And that is what you really see here that there is a parallelized version of multi-head self-attention layer. And if you study here, you will see that all the scores, attention scores are being concatenated 
So the results from the each particular attention mechanisms are concatenated and the final layer and the final linear transformation is applied to generate the compact representation of the input tags. And that's where you could see very clear here that concatenation. So this whole the value keys and queries for multiples in parallelized way for the input sentence has been computed, concatenated and finally the lin linear transformation is applied to generate the final attention score of hope, the attention matrix for everything all the words available in the input sentence but we are not satisfied with this answer so we want to know all the technical steps covered in this so we could say so describe all the technical steps covered when multi-head self-attention is in process within the encoder part of the transformer in the chat gpt so this is the question but we need to rephrase this better so i could say rephrase this question so this is the question which i just came up but i really wanted to make it much more better so we can ask chat gpt to rephrase it and then we can ask this is a question so let's understand one more time what are the technical what are the technical steps involved in the process of applying multi-head self-attention within the encoder part of the transformer architecture in gpt much more clear than the previous one very convoluted so what we were doing here that was in uh, subject it quite uh, subjective kind of answer but i really wanted to understand in steps like the more technical details so these are the six steps which are being explained and looking into that if you see here that the this whole process is explained into the different steps and but we haven't got the depth or the technical world which i'm really looking into the scale dot product product attention so we can ask this question either directly that what is the scaled dot product or we can actually take the same question we can say if we can get an idea about the python code pytorch code so you can say so this is our question you can say write so write the pytorch code to implement the multi-head self-attention within the encoder part of the transformer architecture. So we can get a PyTorch code which could help us to understand this whole process much deeper. And if you look into this code and look into this process, you will get a very good idea what is really happening. You could see it's a feed-forward network. As you could see here is the queries, keys and values. They are being created. That is what the queries, keys and values are being created. Then after if splitting the queries, keys and values into the edge heads and then math multiplication is applied, softmax and dropout. And you could say here that math multiplication is created. So this is a scale dot product attention here and then softmax is applied and these scores what we have, they are attention weighted, attention weighted values are created that is a math multiplication which is again here and finally that is concatenated here that is what the concatenated and finally the linear transformation is created and that is what the linear transformation is created so this code which this image which we have seen about the encoder part of transformer in chat gpt and here is the code for that and if we would just want to say that because this is what happening in a dot product attention score in the same question you can actually ask chat gpt to understand that also so you could say how does scale dot product attention is implemented in the transformer encoder so what we have actually seen here that can be summarized into few sentences and if this answer is not understood because it's kind of paragraph you can actually bullet point so i asked to add technical details and put the answer into the bullet points so what we have seen here has been written into the bullet points and these points are really very important for us to understand this whole process and if you would take this whole the scale dot product attention and you just say can you create the python code for it so generate the PyTorch code to show how does scale dot product tension mechanism works in transformer encoder. We hit the error. Let's reload. We still have the context to our current session. And here is creating the scale dot product attention using an neural network module. 
So you got the Python code with the implementation in PyTorch for the scaled dot product attention. So we had went through a lot deeper understanding the encoder part of transformer. Now let's understand the same thing for the decoder part of transformer. And I do have an image which really talks about the multi-head attention, how it's usually implemented in the decoder, but image is pretty much same. Like the everything is happening pretty, pretty much similar way. The scale dot product attention is implemented in the multi-head uh, attention and that is basically the here is the code for a scale dot production attention. So the question is how does so our question is how does multi-head self attention works in the decoder part of transformer. So looking into this decoder as you could see there is a masked multi-head attention and there is a multi-head attention looking into the description through the chat GPT you could get an idea that it's the multi-head self attention mechanism it does work very similar in the decoder but there is a big difference is that there is also an additional multi-head attention mechanism which is applied to attend the encoder output so this encoder is actually sending the output which is being fed into the decoder input so that's where the masked multi-head attention comes into the play the input to the decoder is split into the query key and value matrix so here everything is being query key and value matrix is being split and these query key and values are passed through with the multiple parallel attention heads so again you could see that multiple parallel attention head which is very similar to here what we have seen and in the label 5 the final output of these previous is passed through the uh, another multi-head attention mechanism that attends the encoder outputs and the results here the encoder outputs this is encoder outputs these results are being also added along with these and then they are um, uh, concatenated or added and they normalized and uh, uh, step six the concatenated result are passed through into another feed forward neural network to produce the final decoder output and everything is passed into this last feed forward net neural network where they are concatenated and normalized for the final output to generate the linear representation of the result and finally going through the softmax and outputs will be generated so you have seen that how we understood the transformer encoder part decoder part the scale dot multiplication how the self uh, attention as well as the multi-head cell potential is implemented. So most of the technical role details related to the large language models implementation with regard to transformer and in the context of chat GPT we have understood here. We can summarize that a, what kind of the neural network and the deep learning methodologies are applied here. So the question is they describe the key deep learning methods which are applied with the transformer into GPT and we have already went through this attention mechanism and multi-head self-attention. We got a new word, something called the position-wise feed-forward networks, layer normalization, already know activation, but we have seen that we are using softmax there, masking. Now, if you would want to generate the keywords for all the answers we have collected in this session, so we are asking these to summarize all the answers into a list of keywords. So these are the top keywords which we have found based on all the questions we have asked to chat GPT related to large language models and the transformers. After that, we might have some burning question that we already know that supervised learning is applied in the chat GPT. So we can ask if the unsupervised is applied. So the question is, does unsupervised learning was applied to chat GPT training. So the next question in the same series we could ask related to the large language models. So what are the large language models? So then we could ask that what is the underlying architecture of a large language models? So we already know that open AI GPT-3, Google Bird, Microsoft Ernie, Facebook also has I think Robert -E. So there are various uh, large language models generated by various large organizations in the field of you know natural language processing or creating the natural language tasks such as sentence completion next word generation question answering etc so the underlying architecture of the large language model is a transformer network so i've just asked to summarize the previous answer into the bullet points for higher degree of clarity 
and understability. So we have got the large language models, you know, they have billions of parameters, you know, so it, that allows them to capture a large amount of information. So we could actually ask what are these parameters and how they are calculated or they counted. So the question is what are the parameters in any large language model and how they are counted. So we know that the parameters in the large language models, they are determining its capacity and complexity. The larger the number, the model has its capability to generate even better and the correct answers and the complexity means in order to train, it's going to use massive amount of resources. And as of 20 to 2021, the GPT-3 had about 175 billion parameters, one of the largest one. And here is the code. If we would want to convert this code into a Python, you can actually ask, you know, so create the a Python code to calculate the parameters in any ne neural network. Let's reload. So this is a, any neural network. This is how you can calculate, but we are interested into the large language model with the kind of chat GPT size or which has the self-retention mechanism. So this question is very specific towards the large language model. So which has the multi-head self-retention built into and that code can help you understand how you can calculate the number of parameters for a given model. And it looks like the, the answer has been cut because the limit of tokens in the answers. But you can get an idea that, as you could see, that the query keys and values are being calculated properly. And everything what we have learned through encoder and decoder, all these things has been applied in order to generate the total number of parameters. We we'll make sure that is using the transformer architecture. Now we can also ask questions where we know that large language models are used to generate the images as well as text. So what are the differences? So you could ask, question is very direct that how does the Galley large language model is different from chat GPT? So we get the answer that the Galley large language model is trained to first understand the, the prompt and then generate the image versus the chat GPT is designed to generate the text. So we need to really understand more of the technical architecture. So how does the DALI architecture is different from chat GPT? Because that's where we are going to get more technical answers, what we are looking for here. So DALI takes the textual de description of an image and generate the output as an image versus chat GPT generate the text and another difference between these two models is that's the attention mechanism. So DALI uses the special, atten special attention mechanism that allows the model to attend to different reasons of an image when generating its output. It can understand the various reasons of the image while the chat GPT is using the self-attention. So you can get an idea that, okay, if you want to go deeper about the tally, you need to understand the self-attention, uh, sorry, the special attention mechanism, which is uh, unique to the understanding the different reasons in a given image. If you would want to go even more deeper, you can ask the technical architecture differences. So next, we are asking the transformer architectural differences between the DALI and the ChatGPT. And as you could see here, that the DALI is actually using the combination of transformer and the convolutional neural networks to generate the images. And if you take the same question and you, you rephrase it, you will get a very different answer. The question is, explain the key differences in details between DALI and the chat GPT transformer architecture. So that's where the prompt engineering comes in handy because you are rephrasing your question in a way where you can get the specific answer you are looking from from these large language models. And the word I was looking for, the multi-model transformer architecture because it's used the combination of self-retention layers and the convolutional layers to handle the image generation. So by rephrasing the question differently, I was able to get what I was looking for. So as of now, you have very good idea about how to understand and learn a very specific topic with the help of chat GPT. You must know the way you can ask, ask the question for to these large language models to get the answer you are looking for. If you would want to get the list of all the questions we have asked so far, and here is the question that lists all the questions I have asked in this session. And as you could see, we have asked 34 questions in this session and all the questions are 
available for us. If you would want to summarize all the answers into the 10 bullet points, you can also ask. So the question is summarize all my answers into 20 bullet points based on technical complexity available in my answers. And this thing is going to take some time for the chat GPT to understand and the process the results. So you can get the 14 good bullet point which gives you the summary as the footnote with regard to this video. You can also ask for keywords. So the list of keywords will be generated based on all the answers in this session. So that conclude our chat GPT session to learn the large language models, chat GPT itself and the technology or the transformer technology which is the core of chat GPT and the various other large language models. Okay, so the video stops here and I believe is that there was a lot to learn for you in this video. Yeah. Thank you so much for your time. I would like to see you in my next video. Until then, thank you so much.